Now it's time the weather finally cleared up so we can do a test flight of the DJI Mini 2. So this is a, this will be a first impression, uh, sort of kicking some tires and testing out some of the functionality that you'll be getting with this uh, latest new drone release from DJI. Welcome to another video, I'm Henrik Olsen and if you want to learn how to make better videos with your camera and drone in general, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. I'm so stoked, many of you have decided to uh, do that lately and I'm really happy to see the growth of the Tech Drone Media community. During this test flight I will uh, record some uh, video clips and I will make sure to upload those to the Tech Drone Media website so you can download them from yourself for further analysis in your own editing tool. Have you already decided to purchase uh, the Mini 2 and don't need to watch the rest of this video? Then head down to the description where there are purchase links if you are located in the US, Scandinavian including Denmark and rest of Europe. Let's get the drone unpacked and get out and get some mileage on it. Drone, remote. It is a little bit uh, windy today, but nothing uh, serious. So let's see, uh, yes. So this firmware update, it tells you that uh, if you install that, uh, there's compatibility between this remote, so you can use the GGI Mini 2 remote with the Mavic Air 2. So that's nice, we don't need that right now, so we take that away. Right now we will start off in normal mode. And you've got to be kidding me, I have no SD card. So what I just noticed is that I forgot the SD card at home, but luckily I have the other drone with me, so I can just snap that one and mount that in the drone. That is, that is the curse of being a one-man band when you're doing this. Sometimes it's uh, <laughs> things are simply going too fast. So let's get airborne. Nice lift off. Let's start this. Let's just fly up here. So we can see the castle. Here. And we are just going up so we have clearance to the castle. Something like that is a little bit hazy today. But the first thing that I want to demonstrate is the zoom functionality. You see there's a 1x here in the back. So if I do like that, I can do 2x, I can do 1x, I can do 2x. And right now we are recording in 1080 p uh, not in 1080p, in 4K. So let's just stop this recording. Go into the menu here and uh, switch it down to 1080p. We can do, uh, we don't need to do uh, 60 FPS right now, just like this. And then you can see what happens if I start the recording here. I have one time zoom, two time zoom. Let's just put this one up here like this. And we have four time zoom. Look at that. Look how much zoom that you can do. I'm really sorry that it's a bit hazy, but you get the point. So, And let's repeat the process. Look here. So 1x. So now it's magnified by a factor 2. If I press one more, it's magnified by a factor 4. This is a tremendous amount of zoom that you're getting with this drone. And you know what? I'm going to show you a little tip. If you long press this icon here, you can actually, you can gradually zoom. Look at this. It's kind of cool to get access to this kind of functionality in an entry-level drone. I know that uh, the four times zoom is not uh, real. Two of them are lossless and the other two magnifications are uh, lossy. So there might be a de degradation of uh, the footage. Let's just do one where we actually record. So you can download it and see for yourself. So this is times one, this is times two, and this is times four. And we can do one here. And we just do the gradual zooming. Like that. Then let's just repeat the test with the zoom. So that's one time zoom, two time zoom, and four time zoom. What do you think about the zoom capabilities? That's cool, isn't it? Let me know in the comment below. And as I said, I will put these clips up so you can download them on the Tech Drone Media website. Link will be included in the description below. So that was the zoom function. Okay, let's uh, try the function button here. So now it's set up, so it's a uh, Double tap, see that the, the gimbal goes up and down. You can do it the other way around if you prefer that. You can also switch it into the map view here. So 
In this way, you can, by a single tap, you can switch between the map and the camera view. That's also a really nice and handy feature. Let's uh, do some reference recordings uh, from the different, uh, let's just choose another subject where that's not as hazy as this one. So let's just select the area down here. Use that as a gimme pick for this. I'm sorry, it's not sunny, so I can show you some of the nice. So let's start by doing 4K 30 FPS. And we are doing five seconds clip of that. That. So we are going to do 2.7K, also 30 frames per second. Like that. And then we are doing 1080p, also 30 frames per second. That will give you three identical frame rate clips to uh, compare. Like that. Do one for the sake of it in 60 FPS. We know the, the famous slow motion test. So we're doing that by going down to 1080p and 60 FPS. I will include this clip as well. Those are the, the three uh, video modes or the three video resolutions, the 4K, 2.7K and uh, 1080p. Let's jump into photo and see what we can do here. There is a single photo here and it's set to manual. We're just doing auto as it is right now. So let's just take a single picture of the area here. And we can also go to the AEB setting, and that will allow us to take three pictures in uh, one go. One that is neutral exposure, one that is overexposed, and one that is underexposed. Let's do, do that. So it automatically snaps three pictures for you. And uh, I just want to make sure that uh, the setting is correct. It says to JPEG and RAW. That is what we need, because that will give us a lot more options in post. I need to check another thing. It's 4.3 which is the preferred format that I use because the 69 is a cropped in version of uh, the 4.3. So that will give you the most amount of uh, options when you are playing around with this. All right, so those were the obvious uh, ones. There's also the time shots. I can do those. So maybe I can do a few of those. Let's just do five seconds. So what happens here, it takes a photo for every five seconds. And you could use this uh, function to do your own uh, time lapse. Just simply uh, let it run for a long time. It will continue until you stop it or the drone runs out of battery. So it keeps counting down, taking pictures, counting down, taking pictures, counting down. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's stop there. That would be a very short time lapse. <laughs> you, need, you need at least uh, 24 pictures per second to get a time lapse that is more or less fluent. Let's continue to test some of the stuff that we couldn't test uh, while uh, the drone was not airborne. There's the panorama feature. Let's just try that and take a panorama. So what it's doing right now, it's uh, just hanging above my car here. It will uh, basically do a 360 panorama. This is something that we normally uh, used to do with uh, third-party apps like Litchi. That they were offering uh, that functionality, and uh, if you currently own the Mini One, that's still an option. And uh, I made a video about this. And in case that you missed that, I will uh, link it up here, so you can see how you can do 360 panoramas uh, with your Mini One. But right now, you're getting it uh, natively supported in the DJI Fly app, so that is a uh, pretty nice. Look at those colors. So that was the 360 panorama. Maybe we can see it in here somewhere. It's working on it. See, there's a panorama picture. Woo -doo -woo -doo -woo -doo. <laughs> so that is the first uh, panorama picture that I've seen rendered inside the app. So that's a pretty nice uh, feature. So let's get back here and test some of the other stuff we have here. We also have a 180 degree panorama. Let's do that. So that is uh, basically doing like a really, really wide picture of the area. And it's a bit of a shame that it's so hazy today because this could have been really, really wonderful and beautiful. So now it's it's not so beautiful. It's a little bit semi-beautiful. But uh, you access sort of this through uh, the library here. And now it stitches it. So you get the panorama. So now you have the big panorama picture that you can use and share on social media. Let's do a wide shot. First, let's uh, go for the reference, do a single shot. 
and then we will switch to the panel and then do a wide shot like that because that will allow us to compare and see how much wider it is. But this um, uh, technique is basically taking nine individual photos, make sure they overlap and then stitch them together to one big wide image. And we, again, we can go in here and we can see it. So this is uh, the white picture, the normal picture. I can go to the white here. So you can see there's a quite a difference. You get a lot more stuff uh, framed uh, by using this technique. So that's a nice option as well to get in there. Let's just fly a little bit around so you can just get a glimpse of uh, what the video quality looks like. So what we can do now is uh, we can do a simple uh, thing. We can switch it into cinema mode and we will try sports mode afterward. So let's just see if we can do some smooth flying here. And so far we are doing pretty well. I don't want to go near those houses over there. So what you can see from this, this is a pretty capable drone. So the 4K footage looks absolutely good. What do you think? The files are getting way too big if I do something like this. So let's just do a reference clip here where we fly this direction. So you get like a 10 seconds 4K clip that you can start in your own editing software. Ah, it was 15 seconds. <laughs> you will get them raw and unedited, so there's absolutely no problem in, uh, in doing this. So let's switch it into sport mode and see what, how zippy it actually is. It's always more fun to test sport mode when we're flying close to the ground. So let's see. Uh, make sure to clear the area here. Nobody's around. So punch it, Bishop. At least here under these conditions, uh, the 16 uh, meters per second, that seems far off. I couldn't even get close to 12. Uh, let's land it and uh, switch the battery and see if we can make it uh, do 16. I could suspect DJI uh, throttling down the drone uh, when the, the battery gets below maybe 50%. So let's uh, just uh, switch the battery and uh, repeat the test. Let's do it again. Punch it. Can't get it above 12. So, so I guess the maximum speed right now is uh, at least, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. At least uh, it doesn't uh, get anywhere near the 60 meters per second. That, that's for sure. What I want to show you now is the last item. That's the quick shots. So let's start by just taking the different modes. So, so this is uh, the drone where it backs away and it ascends. That was a strange drone. <laughs> the cool part about the quick shots are the drone returns to, to sort of the starting point when it's done. So it will basically come back, or at least it used to do that. <laughs> yeah, it comes back. Time timed out. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So let's try rocket. Rocket, that is uh, basically uh, the idea is that the drone uh, will race from the same point and it will simply tilt the gimbal and keep me in frame or the car in frame while it's uh, flying up. The next in line is the circle. That's basically just a circle, and that way it will just circle around a uh, sort of a point of interest. And of course you can make some pretty cool shots uh, with, the, with the circle function. That's sort of a, a given that you need to have that in your back. So it's doing a 360 around the car here. And you can uh, switch the direction that you want the drone to go in uh, by, by pressing these arrows. So we have the helix. The helix 
is uh, simply it's the same basically it's just it increases the radius uh, to the subject so you can see when it turns around it will uh, basically move away from the car or from the point of interest so that also creates some uh, really cool effect So it goes small, bigger, 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 bigger until it's completed. So now we have another one, and that's a new one that was not available on the previous model, and that is the boomerang. And that is uh, basically like when you throw a boomerang, never tried to throw a boomerang, but at least when television when you throw a boomerang, it flies out and it comes back. So it increases the distance to the subject. So now it's increasing. It's going away, going away, going away, going away, going away. And now the boomerang starts to return. Da 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 da. So that is the boomerang shot. So let's, um, the final thing that we need to test out here is uh, the return to home. So we just press the return to home. So now the drone will head back to us. And you might notice there are two lines uh, on the remote here and then um, next to the return to home functionality. And that is, uh, indicates that it's also a pause button. And if this is the home position, then it's 100% off. So in that case, it's really nice. If you notice something is wrong, you can simply just press this one a single time and then everything stops. Then the, the drone sort of ceases uh, what, uh, whatever it's doing. So this was the, my first real flight. I have been flying uh, this a little bit before. So this is my first real flight with the Mini 2. And I must say that uh, it flies uh, pretty much like expected. It seemed I was not capable of getting uh, the right uh, top speed with the drone. You know, I was only uh, capable of getting up to 12 meters per second. I don't know why that is the case, but uh, that's definitely something that uh, we need to ask uh, DJI. Otherwise, uh, all the features uh, looks really nice. You can see footage for yourself by downloading uh, sample clips from the Tech Drone Media Facebook site. I'm pretty happy with the purchase uh, so far. After watching this video, have you decided to purchase uh, the DJI Mini 2? Let me know in the comment below. And if you happen to be from Denmark, I would highly recommend to purchase your Mini 2 from Droner DK. They are such awesome guys and always up for a chat if you stop by their shop in Copenhagen. They also have a workshop that can help you with almost any problem that you will encounter with your drone. You should definitely go to the description below and check them out. Right now you've got a short glimpse into the DJI Fly app. If you want a complete tutorial about all the features uh, that are available for the Mini 2, then I made a video about this and you can access this through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.